Hey folks, Santee here at the Arizona Illustrators. Guess what? I'm with Odessa Red. Now some of you may not know her, but she is actually one of the foremost Victorian ladies in the reenactment community across the U.S. We did a little episode a little while ago where we actually uh, showcased that hat you're wearing. That's from 1870s, right? That is correct. Isn't that neat? I mean, she's actually wearing a hat from 1870s. That's, that's neat. It kind of gives me the goosebumps. It's an interesting feeling wearing something that a lady wore, you know, 100 years ago or 80 years ago, whatever um, decade it was, and knowing that she was walking around and doing things that she would have done in her average everyday ordinary life like I'm doing too. So it's kind and of neat And we know she experience. wasn't buried in it. That is a fact. So win-win, right? That's right. So how did you get the name Odessa Red? Well, I've always been called Red because of my red hair. And one day, many, many years ago, I actually met um, online on the internet a gentleman named Lester P. Larceny uh, when we were playing roulette online. We were gaming online. And I found out that he worked up at Calico Ghost Town. And so I ventured up there one day to visit him and got to know him. And I loved Calico since my childhood anyway. And he told me one day, he said, he said, Rebe, he goes, you need to start reenacting. And I said, well, I don't have any clothes. And um, that came later, and he said, well, you need a good name. And he kind of did his chin, and he looked around, and, and he looked at the sign for the Odessa Railroad. And, oh. Yes. But he looked at me, and he said, Odessa. Odessa Red. That has a good ring to it. So, so I've been well, Odessa Red since then. So you got interested through that experience, you got interested in Old West. Were you always interested in the Old West? or? Um, actually, I got interested in the reenacting part and the living history part once I met Lester, but my love for the West and mining camps and old buildings and history uh, way back because my family actually has um, old gold mines in the mountains of New Mexico. So, and then actually in Oro Grande as well. So we would go up to New Mexico and the town that's up there, and I won't say the name for obvious reasons, but well, I'm not going to go because we got claim jumpers that want to come in there and jump our claim. So I'm not saying where can, it's at. Can you just whisper it? Or... Never heard of it. Okay. Anyway, so we would go up there and we would prospect in our in the gulch up there, and it's a really neat town. It has um, the homestead where we stayed at. Right next door was the Assay General Store Post Office. And then there was also the log cabin schoolhouse as well as the the town hall and and the schoolhouse at a later date and there is actually an 1880s cemetery there so at a very oh, young wow. age it was, it's mm. it's yeah. amazing what is it about the old west that you like well santee um, one of the things that i really like about the old west is that we all came from somewhere and i find it fascinating that the average everyday ordinary person that came across on the overland trail or the old spanish trail or the mormon trail they all started somewhere and they had a lot of tenacity and strength and they had a lot of will and it fascinates me that they actually made it across and then they settled along the way until they ended up in california or wherever their destination was and they are the ones that established the towns as they are today they are the very root of these amazing big cities, even like Los Angeles or San Francisco or many, many cities in between. You know, that's fascinating because I do, uh, I know you do some education, you'll tell the folks about that, but I do a little education too and one of the things that uh, I've been asked is, well, why was it so important to have the Old West? And I tell people all the time, hey listen, you know, you're talking about a, a country that just came through a civil war. There were thousands of people that didn't have homes to go to anymore. Right. And there was opportunity out west. Now, they were going to have hardships, but they did it. They had the tenacity, like you said. They had the guts to, to, to buy a wagon with their remaining money and move all of their stuff through Indian-infested land and never knowing what's going to happen or what they're going to do. Or Well, through sickness, amazing. through illness, you know, many didn't make it. But the ones that did, they are the ones that established these towns and, and created a place that we call home today. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It is. Can you tell the uh, viewers, my viewers, can you tell the viewers a little bit about what kind of research that you do when you do your costuming? Sure. I try to go into in-depth detail with my, my research because I try to portray myself as accurately as possible. Of course, I have cheat days, you know, because my feet hurt or whatever uh, when I go I to an event. I have cheat days too, but it's a different thing. <laughs> I know. 
Twinkies and stuff. And I won't tell stuff. anybody. Yeah, <laughs> but I literally, I'll go on the internet and I'll have 15 tabs open and I cross-reference, I do a lot of research because I can't always go to Mississippi and go through their archives there. So I try to rely on uh, what's available on the internet and I do a lot of cross-referencing. And a lot of times for some of my characters, what I will do is when I'm doing a living history uh, person uh, that I'm bringing back to life, I'll try to find out as much information and that's going through um, old newspaper articles, all the archives, all the laser fish. I'll buy old books that are not in print any longer. I bought one that was like $200 just to get some information that I was hoping was in there. And I actually found some on um, Charlie Parker's actually. It was on an old book uh, written by Phineas Banning's sons. So that was very helpful. So I try to uh, utilize uh, period fashion plates. I try to definitely do research on all the f old photographs and so getting all the um, accoutrements, hats, pins. The hair is interesting to me because I always try to, you know, Rita, you know Rita, my wife, is. Uh, yes. she's done a little bit of this. She's not as into it as you are, but the problem always comes up, what did they do with their hair? Um, I notice you have yours pinned back, but then you've got a, a lovely little lock coming down I'll, the front. I'll turn for the, for um, the audience. Is there a book that actually says this is how they did their hair, or you no. go off of pictures? Well, there probably are books out there um, that deal directly with uh, period hair hairstyles, but I just look online, I look at the old photographs, and I can see how their hair's pinned up, hmm. and there are books with fashion plates in them that, that have um, hairstyles in them, as well as just like ladies of today that, that weave their hair, they also had hair pieces. When they brushed their hair, um, they would save their hair, and what they would do is they would make a rat or a roll, so it would give some volume to their hair as well. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Did they have mohawks? A lot of questions I'm going to have. Mohawks, maybe. Maybe they, not. Okay, so if you're asking, they have <laughs> maybe mohawks. They kept their hair? I'd never you? say never, because as soon as you say never, you'll find Some a picture. Spikes. That's right. You'll find a picture with somebody that has something that you said never existed. So never say never. Right. Well, you know what? I am really happy that you did this because you uh, you bring a lot to this hobby, I guess is what it is. Mm -hmm. You bring a lot to the hobby. And I I'm really happy that. that you actually do the education, too, because you know, it's one thing to go up and dress up and win awards. It's another thing to actually go and, and spread that knowledge to other people, right. you know? Because, you know, young, young girls are going to look at you and go, I want to be like her. She's cool, you know? And uh, that way you're passing the torch down to the kids. I try to inspire whenever I can. Of course, it's always fun to participate with my fellow reenactors and um, go to the different events where we have the gunfight competitions and the living history as well as costume contests. That's always a lot of fun, but I find greater satisfaction when I, I, I go to schools, um, I go to senior centers, and what I really like about the senior centers is the fact that sometimes when I'm doing one of my presentations, I'll have one of the people that live there, they'll look at me and they'll say, oh, you look just like my grandmother, you look just like my oh, great grandmother. Cool. Yeah. They, they'll say they had a dress just like you're wearing and I said really tell me more because that's the real history right there, that's tangible real history and so I'll have them tell me, well tell me more about your grandmother, what did she do and, and what did she like to say and how did she dress and, and those things are um, often lost in translation with modern technology and um, they're going by the wayside. So I feel it's really important to embrace that information and, and actually incorporate that in some of the reenactments that I do. Well, you know, it's been really great having you. It's really chilly in here all of a sudden. Oh no. I kind of feel the yeah. chill going up my neck. Red, you don't think Bill's here, do you? It's awful cold in here. Oh God. He's in the other room. No. Let's go Can check. Can you go check for me? We're going to go check. Because I'm going to get a little frightened right now. Yeah. He won't hurt you. It's just a Are you sure? <laughs> Bill! <sighs> On behalf of the Arizona Ghostwriters, I would like to publicly apologize to Odessa Red for the lewd and lascivious behavior of one William Whitney Brazelton, my ghost. In the future, I would like to have more female reenactors come on the show, providing I can keep them on his good behavior. So, well, that's it for another episode. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on down the trail. Do you have like a hand button that you just want to click on?
on and off. <laughs> just live. This is a low budget. <laughs>